a bowl of water which is kept on a gas burner. Now we heat the bowl such that some heat energy is transferred into the bowl. But we cannot lift the bowl however energy we transfer to the bowl. Also think of a cup of hot coffee which is kept on a table. Can this coffee get even hotter by absorbing heat from the surroundings? The answer is no, although there is no such restrictions mentioned in the first law. It is the fact that heat cannot flow from cold region to hot region spontaneously is the closest statement of the second law of thermodynamics. We may conclude that processes are restricted to certain directions only. Now to understand this point, we should get an idea about spontaneous process. A spontaneous process is the process which proceeds on its own without the help of an external agency. It is worthy to be noted that spontaneous processes are unidirectional. We shall try to formulate a reasoning for this unidirectional property of spontaneity. Previously, it was thought that the key to spontaneity of a process should be lowering of enthalpy as because a system always tend to proceed in a direction where the total energy of the system gets lowered. This actually happens in the case of exothermic process where there is distinct lowering of enthalpy. The logic fails for endothermic process where the enthalpy of the system is raised. But it was observed that the chaotic or random nature of the system increase in the case of endothermic spontaneous process. Like reaction between two solids, barium hydroxide and ammonium chloride is spontaneous as well as endothermic. It is seen that randomness or chaotic nature of the product is more than that of the reactants because there are liquid products. We all know that liquid molecules are more mobile than solid molecules. Therefore, the random nature of the product is more. This randomness or chaotic nature of the system depends on the heat absorbed by the system and also the temperature at which the heat is absorbed. The ratio of this heat absorbed to the absolute temperature is a measure of randomness or chaotic nature of the system. This actually affects the change in entropy of the system. Spontaneity demand an increase in total entropy of the system. That is, delta S system plus delta S surrounding should be greater than zero. But delta S surrounding is equal to minus delta H system divided by the absolute temperature. Now, spontaneity of a process in a closed or open system therefore cannot be judged by delta H system or by delta S system alone. Or in other words, the process may not be spontaneous even if delta H system is negative because delta S system may be negative as well. Again, delta S system may be positive but delta H system may be positive as well making delta S surrounding more negative. Due to this very reason, another thermodynamic function was introduced which is called Gibbs free energy and is designated by G such that g equal to h minus ts. It is an extensive function and a state function as well. Delta g equal to delta h minus t delta s minus s delta t. For isothermal process, delta g equal to delta h minus t delta s. If delta g is less than zero, then the process is spontaneous, otherwise not. The conclusions that we draw are as follows. Case number 1. Delta H is negative, delta S is positive. The process is spontaneous at all temperatures. Case number 2. Delta H is negative and delta S is negative as well. In this case, low temperature and small change in entropy is favored. Case number 3. Delta H is positive and delta S is positive as well. This condition is true for most chemical reactions. High temperature and high entropy change is favored. This is why high temperature is favorable for most chemical reactions. Case number 4. Delta H is positive and delta S is negative. Such processes become very difficult to carry out.